Ah, the Radial Mark II, a fine piece of engineering that's a good example of everything that uh, this game uh, does such so well in so many ways. It'd be a shame if we did something funny to it. Yeah, let's do that. So this aircraft is actually pretty good. Uh, they've got a lot of really good things with the supercharger and the turbocharger and all that good stuff. And performance curve on this thing, you can see we're producing about 16, 17, 100 horsepower on it. But it's, it's it's not what I want in an airplane. I want it, I want I want something new. I want something that just you know it, it, it's got a little more kick to it. So I'm gonna rip that thing right out of there. And uh, instead, we're gonna replace it with a turbofan. <laughs> so our turbofan engine, of course, is uh, we're gonna take advantage of everything we know about making engines here and uh, design something that makes sense to us. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by grabbing us a lovely turbine here. I love the fact that he's got his snap so much better than I ever do. And I'm gonna go ahead and click right here, and it's uh, gonna go ahead and put that in the wrong spot completely. And I'm actually gonna grab that, and I'm actually gonna delete it because it's in the wrong spot. Instead, I'll come around from the front and I will try to hit it to grab it on kind of that angle kind of a thing like that. So grab the turbine. I'll see here. Can we lock that in in such a way it's actually going to behave? Come on. Come on. Oh, of course, we can have dual turbines. That could be kind of amusing. Well, let's see. <laughs> come on. You can do it. Come on. Come on. You're going to lock on. There we go. Ew, it's canted. Oh, we definitely don't want that canted. So we're going to rotate that and set it back to zero, set that to zero, zero, zero. All right, nice. Let's go ahead and toss this thing up in the front. And one thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, modify this thing so it goes a little bit better through the center of gravity. Uh, that's one of the important concepts of any engine that we create here. All right, it looks pretty good right there. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a file, save as. Uh, we're going to save this as uh, uh, radial, uh, let's call this a uh, radial MK2. That sounds pretty good to me. Okay, so here comes the real question. What kind of engine is this going to be? Uh, how are we can engineer this so that we get both uh, fuel economy? Uh, speaking of fuel economy, by the way, we probably want to switch this over to Jet A. Uh, it's probably going to be smart on our part. So we're just going to go over there and set that real quick. And we're good to go. Okay, that's nice. We probably want to make the whole wing with Jet A, but that's fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch this. Of course, I have plenty of engines to choose from here. And uh, the dumb thing to do would be to come in here and say, give me a 5C. <laughs> um, no, but this is good for us because this provides us a starting point for designing the rest of our engine. And I'll show you why. If I shrink this down now, I can actually take this and I can now shove it into the nose of this and actually have our little tiny engine. So if we go just a little bit more like that. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Oh, my friends, my friends, that is the correct usage of an engine. And I love that to death. Okay, so one of the problems that we've just created, which you probably observe, is our center of gravity has uh, significantly shifted forward. Um, this is a relatively big engine. And um, even coming back a little bit further like this um, will have a substantial impact on the overall center of gravity. You can see how it shifts around here. So uh, we just want to be mindful of that. Of course, uh, what is the bit I grab? Instead of grabbing the engine, which is the actual heavy component here, I grab the cowling. But you'll notice if I move this around, it has a substantial impact here. We want to try to get it within the first quarter of the wing. So I'm actually going to back that up even further. And uh, one thing I'm really tempted to do is actually take this thing off and um yeah we're gonna take it off i feel bad because it's like part of the airplane but um oh my gosh isn't that gorgeous if that is not the prettiest thing i've seen in a very long time i, I gotta take a picture of it kind of a thing so this engine i have no idea how much power produces so um it's gonna be a learning experience and uh, that's kind of the thing that i love about this game is everything is learning experience like it should be all right, so the first problem I notice is that idle thrust, uh, we're going pretty darn fast here. It's actually very difficult to control this plane. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and kick it up to full throttle here. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what have I done? <laughs> oh, no. So well, a couple problems uh, right off the bat here. Uh, first of all, I need to get rid of the flaps. Uh, second of all, I only have about 15 minutes uh, worth of power. And third of all, and I think this is the best part, is um, I think my power to weight ratio is actually greater than one now. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the engine. Ah, uh, yes, my friends. Uh, this is exactly the correct usage of uh, turbofan technology. I uh, definitely use it for the purposes of uh, climbing uh, basically straight up with your World War II air airplane. Because, um, you know, this is uh, definitely the correct way to uh, utilize this technology. And, of course, uh, I'm not too worried about it. So I'm going to enjoy my little climb here. Obviously, I'm having some trim issues. But that should be enough altitude where if I roll this thing upside down, I should be able to let the uh, weight carry me. And go ahead and I'll give myself a couple of those taps real quickly there. And I'll go ahead and reduce thrust to, I don't know, probably idle. I don't think I'm going to need much more than that. But uh, one thing I will like to do here is I'll go to my controls and I give myself a massive thwack of pitch trim here. <sighs> wow. So um, let's discuss what we've achieved here. So uh, we managed to uh, take our standard jet here and uh, we've done some quick little modifications to it. Uh, we have ourselves um, the ability to 
Pay hour to wait greater than one. Oh, that's the first thing we've achieved here, which I really like. The other thing is I have an hour and 28 minute endurance at basically no throttle in uh, 252 here. So if I wanted to, I could actually pitch this down a little bit. Also, I've eliminated any torque. Now, if I kick this up to full power, I bet we could get this thing going pretty quick. Obviously, we shouldn't be achieving the speed of sound or anything silly like that with it, uh, because if we tried to do something like that, um, this is a turbo fan, and uh, turbo fans don't like going the speed of sound. Bad things happen to them. But we're going to try anyway and see what happens here. Keep in mind, we are not at the optimum altitude to be going fast here. Is that not the most gorgeous thing you've ever seen? <laughs> I love that. Go ahead and give it a couple of those down tips. Yeah, we're easily climbing at 435 here. So um, we're moving quick. Uh, we're Mach 0.70 at 22,000 feet. So uh, we're having no challenge in the universe as far as that building speed up here. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a couple down tips here and uh, see if we can get this thing a little more manageable. Yeah, we're thinking we're going to get 0.8 or even 0.9 at uh, 23,000. It's actually pretty darn good for pretty much any aircraft. And this one actually shoots too. <laughs> I love this stuff. It's uh, just so silly doing things like this. I just thought it looked cool, so I figured I'd go for it. Now, so many experts will say, where's the thrust coming from that you're producing here? Wouldn't it be technically going into the fuselage of the aircraft? To which I say, yes, yes, shh, it's okay, shh. Now, the next problem, of course, we're facing is our aircraft here is not a swept wing airplane. So um, we're also at a thicker atmosphere here. And of course, um, we're not swept. So we're going to be suffering from transonic drag. But uh, 0.80 at this altitude is um, pretty darn good. I'm not complaining in the slightest. And uh, we have a very maneuverable plane, not to mention. Oh, man, I blacked out. Wee! And of course, I put this thing to a dive at full power with, again, a terrible friend in the nose, by the way. Now, we could probably get this thing up pretty fast. And I can hear the wind uh, gushing through my ears here. So we're moving pretty Pretty darn quick here. So this is a pretty cool experiment. And um, yeah, we should leave the experiment there, shouldn't we? Nah, uh, we're, we're not done. Uh, this is cool so far. I like what we did with this, but maybe we can connect this to the engine. But um, I don't know. I feel like it's still missing something. So let's keep going because we're bad people. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the sucker real quick, make sure symmetry is turned on. I'm going to switch this over to the rotation widget. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the wings. And uh, they're going to look pretty hideous. And I completely believe you when you say, man, that looks hideous. And the nice thing is uh, my center of lift actually stays about the same there. So now when I switch back over to my pointy tool here, I can actually uh, pull these things in a little bit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. Our rotation was 25 degrees. Now, remember 25 degrees. You remember 25 degrees, right? Because uh, now what we're going to have to do here under low rotation is we're going to have to cancel out some of that angle that I just put onto it. So I'll go ahead and grab my little rotating thingamajiggy thing, try to figure what axis I'm working here. And uh, we got an anti-25 degrees. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is awesome. Oh, man, I love this thing. All right, let's uh, go ahead and save this. Uh, this is Radial Mark II, which is funny because this is no longer Radial Mark II. This is the Disaster Mark I. Oh, disaster Waiting to Happen Mark I. Oh, let's be more specific here. Good news is we know what we need to do to the trim here. So we'll go ahead and make that quick adjustment here and uh, see what happens. Uh, let's see here. I'm not even starting the engine in. Oh, we're going this fast already. Pitch trim was it down 20 or so. All right, let's go ahead and kick this. Full power. Here we go. Wee. That might have been too much trim. Oh, yes. Oh, that puts a smile on my face. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah. And this is what's so great about the game Flyout is I have taken my World War II, pretty cool plane kind of a thing like that, and I have transformed it into what it needed to be all along, which is a YP-80 knockoff. And this thing is awesome. <laughs> Look at the nose. Oh, man, that's going to make a great shot. I actually got to reduce power a little bit here so I can get it to uh, stop buzzing there like that. Not going again. 50% is still going that fast, and it's going so darn fast uh, for lots of reasons here. Oh, my gosh, I love that. Let me get a picture of that real quick, and then we'll go up to full power again. <laughs> uh, this thing is absolutely awesome, and uh, this is what I love about this game. Is There's nothing to say you can't do it. There's things to say you shouldn't do it, but one of the cool things here is uh, we're relatively low altitude, by the way. We're, um, let's see, about 5,000 feet, which... It's not really suggested to go fast at uh, altitudes like this, but um, you can see we're already getting 460 indicated. And if I wanted to, and I pull this thing into the vertical. There we go. Uh, let's go ahead. No, that's, that's feeling pretty safe there. Is it'll probably let me get away with 70 degrees without too much complaint here. 
There we go. And uh, now, whoa, whoa, there's your uh, gyro lock there. And now I'm just climbing vertically, uh, about 35,000 feet per minute here. And uh, thanks to my uh, newly improved uh, modified uh, wing here, uh, this thing's, uh, we're just going to space as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I'm looking at the wing here. Um, we're still, now nah, we're starting to lose some speed here. So we should probably uh, start pitching over. Get this a uh, nice uh, zero. My favorite is when you do minus one G and you just sort of float out of your seat a little bit there. A little uncomfortable for the passengers when you do kind of stuff like that. But um, I definitely wanted to get ourselves to a little higher altitude here. There we go. We'll go ahead and settle that uh, approach down a little bit. Remember, I don't have an all-moving stabilizer or anything like that. Uh, this thing is completely conventional as far as that goes. There we go. So now we're about 25,000 feet. Uh, last time we got it to about Mach 0.8 and it kind of uh, just sort of settled down on us. And the reason it settled down, as I mentioned, we had all that extra drag. And again, we have the same wing area before. Uh, just the difference here is uh, we've re significantly reduced our transonic drag. Of course, we still have this pesky wheels hanging off the bottom of us. And if we were smart designers, we'd probably take a few minutes to actually uh, remove those as well. Uh, so we could just get that out of the way, which is kind of cool. Yeah, we're getting a little bit more speed. Uh, not a ton more speed, but a little bit more. And um, there there's our incredibly, incredibly amusing aircraft. Um, that's just <laughs> a ton of fun. Enjoy.